a quadratic equation <clears throat> cannot be factored This is where we're going to talk about completing the square. Completing the square is a technique to force a polynomial to factor. So we'll start with an example. <clears throat> and I'll walk you through the four steps in real time with an actual example. So let's say we had x squared plus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. The first step for completing the square is that we isolate the variables. What this means is we get the x's together. And we write it like this. We just want the one out of the way. We're gonna be doing some work on the variables and we don't want anything else to interfere with it. The second step to complete the square is that we factor from the x's the leading coefficient. What I mean, the leading coefficient is just the number in front of the highest power of x. So the number in front of x squared is a 1. I'm going to divide both of our x's by 1. And we just get x squared plus 4x. And then the plus 1 is off on the side. Third step is we take half of the middle term and square it. What that means is we have x squared plus 4x. The middle term I'm referring to is the 4. So if we take 4 divided by 2 and then square it, that's four. And then there's one more step. We're going to multiply the new number by the front and subtract. What I mean is x squared plus 4x plus 4. The new number is the 4. Multiply that by 1 and then subtract it. So we completed the square and this polynomial right here is always going to be a perfect square. If you were to factor this using trinomials, it'd be x plus 2 times x plus 2. The shortcut is it's always going to be half of this middle term. So this would be 1 times x plus 2 squared. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And now this is a problem like we did before we started talking about completing the square. We could just bring the 3 on the other side take the square root, remembering absolute value, get rid of the absolute value by writing plus or minus, and then subtracting the two. So previously we took a problem that couldn't factor, and by using this technique of completing the square, we forced it to factor.
So a few more examples of this. Uh, we'll call, just call this another example. What if we had three X squared plus six X is equal to two? Remember for all of these equations, we wanna make it equal to zero. And then we'll go through our four steps. First step is we isolate the variables. Next, we factor out the leading coefficient from the x's. Next step, we take half of the middle and square it. One squared is one. And we do one times three is three. And then we subtract that. So this will just factor to be x times, well, that trinomial would factor to be x plus one times x plus one if you use the x technique that we talked about. The shortcut, it's always half of this middle term. So half of two, positive two, is just positive one. And then negative three minus two would be negative five. Finishing this up, we could bring the five on the other side. Divide by three. And take the square root of both sides. Remembering when you take the square root of a fraction, you take the square root of the top and the bottom. We have talked about that you're not allowed to have radicals in the denominator. So to get rid of that, we do what's called rationalize by multiplying by the square root of three over itself. So this will just turn into the absolute value of x plus one is equal to the square root of 15 over the square root of nine, which is just three. The whole reason why we multiplied by the square root of three was to get rid of the radical. And as before, there's nothing else we could do to simplify this. So we're just gonna write x plus one is equal to plus or minus the square root of 15 over three, or finally negative one plus or minus the square root of 15 over three. That's a totally acceptable answer for me. Uh, you might also find that answers don't like having separate fractions like this. So one thing that we could do is instead of writing negative one, we can get a common denominator. And instead of writing negative one, multiply by three over three and write our final answer as negative three plus or minus the square root of 15 all over two or I'm sorry, all over, um, all over three. Either one of these answers is fine. I just want you to be able to recognize the same answer uh, in different forms. What if we had x plus five squared is equal to negative 100. Now this is already factored for us. So if we just simply take the square root of both sides, this would just be absolute value. And we talked about how to write the square root of a negative number. We could actually write this as the square root of 100 times the square root of negative one or 10i. Getting rid of the absolute value, we'd get plus or minus 10i and bringing the five over, we get negative five plus or minus 10i. I wanna finish our discussion about the algebraic examples of completing the square with one more where it's 5x squared minus 15x plus 12 is equal to zero.
we'll follow the same steps here. We could get the 12 out of the way. And then factor out the leading coefficient. Next, let's take half of the middle and square it. This would turn into just nine fourths, which will multiply by five to be 45 fourths and subtract that. And factored, this would turn into x. Remember, it's always half of the middle. So in this case, it's negative three x. So half of negative three is negative three over two. And we have to do negative 45 fourths plus 48 fourths, or just three fourths, is equal to zero. I just combine one fraction with the 12. <clears throat> to finish this, let's go ahead and bring the three fourths on the other side. We'll divide by five. Remember, dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this would turn into x minus three halves squared is equal to negative three over 20. Which we could take the square root of. Square root of 20, I'm just going to simplify on the side here. That's the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, or just 2 root 5. So we have the absolute value of x minus 3 halves is equal to i root 3 over 2 root 5. Let's go ahead and multiply by square root of five over itself. And we'd get x minus three halves is equal to plus or minus i root 15 over two times the square root of 25 is just 10. Then bring the three halves over and if you want to write this as your final answer, that's totally fine. But as I said in the previous problem, generally we like to combine two different terms. So in this case, if we just multiply the three over two by five over five, we'd get X is equal to 15 over 10 plus or minus I root 15 over 10 gives us one, maybe a little bit more neat fraction instead of two separate ones. To finish our discussion about completing the square, I wanna just show you where it comes from geometrically in case you're a visual learner. You're not required to know this, but for some people it might help things make a little bit more sense. And I'll just title this geometrically completing the square. All I'm gonna ask you for is to find the missing area value to create a perfect square. We'll do two examples. First one is what if we had x squared plus 4x? I'm trying to find the missing term. This is the number we get from our third step of what I outlined before algebraically. 
So we know it's half of the middle and squared, but the question is, where does that come from? So let's draw a perfect square, or at least the best we could draw, pretty good square. And I'm going to separate this into four sections. That's algebraically re uh, represented by x squared plus 4x in terms of its area. So x squared, we could put as this big piece. And remember, area is length times width. So in order to get x squared, we would have a length of x and uh, a width of x. In order to get the 4x, I could split that up for this to be the area of 2x and this to be an area of 2x. Remember, if we already have a width of x, then this would have to be 2. 2 times x, of course, is 2x. And same thing with this. If we know that this length is x, this would, of course, have to be 2. Well, we're asked to find the missing piece. That area is going to go right here. If we have a length of 2, and a width of two, that missing piece is four. That's where it comes from. So geometrically, this is what completing the square looks like. Let's do one more example of this. What if we had x squared plus eight x plus our missing term? Well, I think you already know what that missing term is going to be, but let's just go through where it comes from. If we have an area of x squared, that would mean the length times the width would be x squared. 8x we could separate to be this area, 4x, and this area, 4x. This length would have to be 4 if the width is x from above. And if this length is x, then this width would have to be 4. That gives us area of each of those pieces of 4x. Well, if the length is 4 and the width is 4, clearly the missing piece would be 16. So if you take a look at both of these numbers, 4 is the same thing as 4 divided by 2 squared. And 16 is the same thing as 8 divided by 2 squared. That's the same as the third step in our process to complete the square.